organic pecan nut farmer Bob Rue is joining me in studio today. We're going to be speaking about the internet and how it's changed farming in South Africa. Hello. Hi, Jen. Nice to see you. Yep, always good to see you. Good to now, be here. Now, you are an organic pecan nut farmer. Tell, tell us about your farm. Where is it? All right, so um, it's a family farm. Mm -hmm. It's right in the middle of the country. It is south of Kimberley on the banks of the Orange River, so just a little upstream from where Hopetown is, fairly remote. How long has your family had the farm for? I'm the fourth generation on the farm, uh, so it's just on 100 years now mm -hmm. that we've been there, and uh, yeah, I'm, the, I'm, I'm number four. Have you always been in the pecan nut business? Not always. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's changed somewhat. Um, when my great-grandfather started, it was the traditional sheep farming, which uh, was at that time, pretty much only one farm there. Mm -hmm. The big shift came in the 70s when my father went back farming. He, he wanted to do something totally different and he got wind that uh, pecans could work. At that time, pecans were, were completely unknown really mm -hmm. in South Africa. There were a few places, but particularly in the western, western section of the country, mm -hmm. there was nothing. So he started there and he literally had to teach himself wow. and, uh, and slowly but surely built you know, what, what, what it is today. Now we're here today to compare how the farm is operating with yeah. technology and the internet to maybe how it was operating when your father started farming pecan nuts. Um, tell me about the access your dad had when, when he started farming pecan nuts on that farm. It, it's funny because when you, when you look at it now, it, it, the, the change is so drastic that you can't actually believe that it could have happened in such a short period. When when the first telephone lines were installed in our farm was about 1950 odd. Those were what? Well, telephone wires, the old mm -hmm. steel wires, and there was a central hub where you would f pick up the phone, phone through, connect like that. Mm -hmm. That stayed constant for until about 1994, around there. Wow. So there was this. There was about 30, 40 years where nothing really changed, and then suddenly these changes came in. Um, you know, when, when I was little, I still remember, in fact, when my father first started exporting, it was 1996. If he wanted to make contact with the customers in Europe at that time, he would, um, he would get a phone call from the local town, which is a 45 kilometer drive, so a 90k round trip. He would get a phone call from the lady at the, at the co-op in town. She would say, Chris, a fax has come through for you. He would then get in his vehicle, I would probably go with, drive to town, read the fax, reply to the fax, she would fax it back and you would drive back to the farm again. Oh my gosh. And that wasn't that long ago, I mean, the yeah. fact that I still remember it. Yeah. So you look at it now, it's, it's changed <laughs> radically. Um, in the morning, for instance, I can be sat in front of my laptop, full Wi-Fi, I can be speaking to traders, whether it be in Hong Kong, Shanghai, speaking to them in the mornings, speaking to the European customers during the day, mm -hmm. and then equally in the late afternoon, evening, I can be speaking to the Americans, American countries. So it's it's changed it's, so it's, much. It's radically different. It's, it's actually unbelievable that you can still remember a time where you had to drive 45 minutes to the town kilometers. to read, or 45 <laughs> kilometers, sorry, <laughs> to town. To read a fax. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, it's it's amazing. So you know, in that in that aspect, it's it's changed it completely. But there are more aspects which have which have really um, brought places like the Karoo, particularly where we farm, to the world. The fact that through social media, through all the um, the portals we have at our disposal now, we are able to show images. We um, a couple of weeks back made a. To two and a half minute video on the farm, really just showing the history, showing the story. And it's been remarkable how well it's been received. And it's because now you have that ability to say, this is where we are, this is what we're doing, where you never had that in the past. What's been, uh, what has the reception been like to the video? What are your international clients um, saying when they can actually see the crew and see where these pecan nuts are coming from? I think what well, really has been, it has been fantastic. Um, the, the important thing to me was, was when we made the video, I was very particular in the sense that it needed to be a place that conjured up a feeling of, of that is remarkable. 
I often have watched nut type videos um, where they're all very generic. It could in fact be any brand associated with it because they all look the same. But I thought we had quite a unique story to tell. And, uh, and to be able to create something where people look at it and go, wow, that looks exceptional. The vastness, and I think that's probably the, one of the key things which people, um, particularly in Europe, have, have appreciated is you know, the, the, the big pan shots where you can actually just see the, the horizon and there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. You know, in Europe and most, most, I guess, most farms across the world, it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite dense in the sense that you have lots of farms alongside each other farming. Whereas we're really lucky in this country where places like the Karoo, it's huge tracts of land, very arid. And that really gives people a sense of, wow, this is exceptional. Why is it important, do you think, for people to know where their products are coming from and to know about the Karoo? Um, you know, there's, there's a big drive. I think people, people place a lot of value in knowing where their food comes from. Uh, particularly in cities where there's such a dysfunction between rural life and city life and you just have food, you eat it and you get on with your day. There's, uh, and particularly in the organic, in the organic uh, market, it's, it's not such a commodity. People really place value in knowing this is where it's from, this is the story and not only do I enjoy the product but it actually has a feel good factor attached to it too. And people like that, and I think it's. I think we see more and more. I mean, you just walk around Cape Town and see the the, the local markets. The fact there's this drive towards um, toward people knowing where things are from, and I think that's probably one of the key reasons. Mm -hmm.